So on All For Animals, we're always talking about great rescue stories. Well, today, we've got one. Meet Bridget, the bridge cat. The story begins when a co-worker of mine called me frantic about a kitten he found in a very dangerous spot in a small park right near the Queensboro Bridge in Manhattan. So I contacted the Humane Society of New York, which is right across the street, and they didn't hesitate to help. Co-executive director Sandra DeFeo and behavior consultant Bill Berloni went to the park with me. We looked all over and even searched a spot where some construction workers thought they saw her. But we had no luck, so the Humane Society loaned me a humane trap. And that evening, I went back. Hopefully, this kitten will come out. So, hopefully, it won't be too long a night. Okay, very good news. We trapped the cat. It just happened at about 8.30. There it is. I'm getting it home. Hi, little one. You're very cute. Can we see your little face? Oh, look at you. I know. I have to give you some food. There's some food over there, but it's spilled. I'll be right back, okay? You of in the bathroom with the door closed, opening the trap to try and put more food in because the other food had totally spilled out and you're not supposed to do that. And um, so the cat got out and went completely ballistic, bouncing off the walls of my bathroom. There's food splattered all over the place. And finally it sort of chilled out and went behind, underneath my toilet. Society. It's a very exciting outcome. Can you see me? The cat is going to the Animal Lovers League, right? Yes. On Long Island. Ted David, right here. Hello. He Hi. Longtime media personality and good friend of mine, former co-worker, has arranged for this to happen. This is the best outcome possible. The woman who runs this place is a feral cat expert. So, yay! Let's go in to the Humane Society. Can we follow you? Yes. Yeah. The one thing that Let me just see if we've got that she had her little thing better this morning. That we didn't want just, to stress her there yeah. a little bit, so we left her yeah. in here. No, this is perfect because this is how you wanted her transported. Yeah. We want her covered. Yeah, she covered. said trap in, trap out. But, okay. Great. Okay, and then um, I'll go get the paperwork. paperwork. Oh, Thank right. you. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like uh, we're in a delivery room. I know. <laughs> Sweetheart. Little one. Look at all of this effort everybody's going into for you, sweetheart. She's a little you gooped see? up right now. Yes, but she's a uh, baby. You have big ears, too. Mm -hmm. yeah, she's four months old. You're a good girl. Hi, baby. And she's post op, too. She just yes, is neutered. She's post op. They didn't she's tip her ear. She's probably scared. She looks okay. like she hasn't groomed herself because that's probably yeah. just she's a little scared. There is a little food in there, so that's good. Okay, she's sweetheart. Just scared. You can have a nice little ride to the suburbs. <laughs> There goes the ambulance. Bye! <laughs> Here she oh. is. There you are. Hi, sweetie. Okay, buddy. There we go. Oh. All right, buddy. Come on. There she goes. Okay. Good girl. Well, hopefully this will be the beginning of a happy ending. They're all so chilled out in here. They love it. It's like Zen, yeah. it's like Zen cats. Yeah. So it's very exciting. It's five weeks later and we're here at the Animal Lovers League with Joan Phillips and we're getting to see Bridget for the first time since she got here. There she is. She's packing it away. Joan, she looks so 
great. How is she doing? Oh, she's really progressed so much. We have a picture of her on our website when she first came in. Yeah. And she was doing what we call airplane ears, where the ears are like this and the eyes are big and scared. And right. as you can see, she has just softened her whole body outline. And her whole expression is so sweet now. She's letting us pet her. So what are the kinds of things that you've been doing to help socialize Bridget and get her ready for adoption? First of all, we work very quietly around them. No big changes. Um, no loud noises if we can avoid it, which isn't always possible. Right. But as you see, food is love. Mm. Food is a very powerful motivator. And we use this where we will even feed them on the end of a spoon if they're afraid of our hand. Mm. And when they finally progress to look at this, what she's doing now, yeah. she's eating out of my fingers. And that's the sign that they've begun to trust and they're well on the path to socialization. She will actually come out of the cage now and sit on our laps. That's amazing. And this has worked for many hundreds of cats that we've worked with. Bridget is about, well, now she's about five months old. Are you able to do the same kind of thing with older animals? We have done socialization and leading to adoption with all ages. But it's given that the older the cat and the experiences it's had, the longer it's lived outside, the longer it's learned to fear people. Mm. There, the cats that are socialized more easily are the ones that have been used to having a caretaker who at least came to feed them. And then they stand a much better chance. But socialization is a question of patience and time. If you have the time and the patience, all things can be achieved usually. So tell me a little bit just about the Animal Lovers League, how long you guys have been around and what you do. In 1994, we responded, a few volunteers responded to a call from the mayor for volunteers for animal welfare. And the old shelter was in a wastewater treatment plant in a garbage dump. And once we saw those faces of the very few animals that were there, and we heard about the euthanasia numbers, we felt we had to do something. So we bought crates and started going to the pet stores on the weekend, the pet supply stores. And we started adopting the animals. And then two years later, the mayor privatized the shelter to us. And we were very fortunate that a company wanted the property. They promised us a shelter in kind. And with a lot of input and a lot of begging, we certainly didn't get a shelter in kind. We offered to raise money for the features the animals have here. To support the groups featured in this episode, visit AnimalLoversLeague.org and HumaneSocietyNY.org. And remember, if you're thinking about adopting a pet, please make yours the next great rescue story and adopt from a shelter or rescue organization. I'm Susan Richard. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on All for Animals.